Oh, hello. Welcome back. It's Mailbag Monday. The beer du jour is uh, from a grower that I picked up the other day at my local Barnhammer Brewing uh, Brewery Brewing Company, which is conveniently located within walking distance of one of my work locations. Um, this is called Grandpa's Sweater. It's an oatmeal stout. I think I've talked about it here before because I like it. Um, yeah, it's available locally, uh, so 90% of you won't uh, won't probably care about the tasting notes or anything, but it's kind of a, it's a malty, roasty, um, it's got a bit of chocolate, a bit of coffee kind of notes in it. It's just a really nice beer. And the way, if you want some, oh yeah, if you want some, just come visit Winnipeg. Don't come and visit me because you're not going to be able to find me. Well, you, I might be there having a beer, but you know. Anyway, um, so, mail. Let's start with this one. It says... Uh, nothing. It says gift. It doesn't say anything. Uh, but it feels nice and big and flat. And it is... Perf board. A bunch of it. Uh, we got five pieces that are scored to snap into ten. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so this is in my quest to find a printed circuit board that matches the layout of, of, uh, what is that? Breadboard. Uh, I found this one, which doesn't exactly match the layout, but it is interesting. This has got two sets of bu common buses, one that wraps around the outside and also comes down the middle here in between each. So I assume that's probably for ground. Um, and then there's these other buses that go just down the middle beside it, which you probably use for power. Oh man, that one's kind of gibbled in, in creation. Is that just that one or is that all of them? No, that's just that one. So when it was being etched, it looks like the uh, resist slipped a little bit. So it got a short between there. That's not really performance. But the rest of them, let's get the breadboard out of the way. Seem to be, oh, this one's got, oh, it's just a piece of the fenolic or whatever the board is made out of. Okay, so this board material, is it? What is it? Yeah, it's kind of a layered, they call it PCB paper. It's kind of a layered resin impregnated material. Back in the day, I remember it being called fenolic. I don't know what it really is, um, which is a resin kind of stuff. Where's, here's some other perf boards that I got. It looks like it's similar material, not exactly the same. This is a little bit smoother than that, those ones. Hmm. Anyway, I guess I should go and check the listing. Is that glare blinding you? Ten pieces DIY prototype paper 4x8 by 13.3 centimeter PCB universal experiment matrix circuit board. That is a mouthful. From 2011 Access City, X City, something like that. Um, that's not what I paid for it. I paid, uh, six fifty three Canadian for it. Currently selling for $7.71 Canadian. Um, I suspect I might have got it in an auction. I'm not sure. But for 10 that's, you know, under 75 cents a piece, that's still a good deal. Thing the next. It says microphone. It says it's $10. I'm not sure. Sure, if that's true, any of it, but we'll see. Oh, it does look like it's a microphone. Let's see what we got in here. And those little Rockstar headset style microphones. Just a mono microphone, not stereo like some of them pretend to be, even though they're not really stereo. Hmm, it's kind of a woven cloth or 
you know, woven type uh, cable. That's nice. And how long is the cable? One foot, two foot, about one yard long, three feet, or just shy of a meter for those who use sensible uh, terms. So this headband thing is fairly stiff and springy. You know, condom over the end so it doesn't stab me inside of the head. And this is actually gooseneck. It's not just a bent piece of wire. It's actually a gooseneck. You know, mic sock over it. Oh, and it's a little directional capsule with a vent port on the back. Okay. So what these guys do is they keep wind noise out of the microphone. Um, or in this case, probably breath noise. Okay, um, if you listen to the last video, the RFID one, you may have noticed that when I was on my laptop, I was having some weird audio issues with the microphone being all peaky and goofy. I think part of that is I wasn't getting a consistent distance between my skull and the microphone. Fortuitously, this guy, which I ordered probably a month or two ago, um, might deal with this. Actually, I ordered this before I found that uh, that USB microphone as well, and I'm still waiting for a stand and an adapter for that. Um, but in the meantime, we'll try this. And actually, I might try it when I go and look at its listing. Wired hands-free headset microphone mic megaphone speaker system for teacher QP. Dollar uh, eighty Canadian from a Love Shopping 2013. Um, I'm going to try and remember to do this too. Uh, this one, according to my math, took about two and a half weeks, 17 days to get here. Which is really quite amazing. Um, anyway, uh, what does it say about it down here? 100% brand new, 3.5 millimeter cable, 100 centimeter, or sorry, 3.5 millimeter jack, 100 centimeter cable, high quality clear sound microphone. Um, directivity, single point. Okay, uh, frequency response, 50 hertz to 16 kilohertz, well outside of, uh, of normal human voice. Sensitivity, NIG 45 dB, plus or minus 3. Uh, impedance, 1,000 somethings, plus or minus 30%. And it uses 1.5 volts. So now then... I guess we'll all be the judge of what it sounds like because I'm using it right now. Unless I'm not because I'm also running my camera with a voice recorder right beside me here, just in case. Okay, next, a nice big package of things. Or thing, a big thing or a bunch of little things. I don't know what to say under there. It looks like there's about four line items under there. But I'm sure they're just lying to us anyway, so... Lots of bubble pack. Wow, lots and lots of bubble pack. Oh, and an assortment of things. Okay, let's check out what all these ICs are here. So, LM, LM358. Those are an amplifier chip. Those are also LM358. Okay. Can I read them without opening them up? Uh, does that say LM339? Can't remember what that is off the top of my head. And LM339. Okay. So got two different types of chip here. That one I buggered a little bit getting it out of the package. So are there more chips in here? No. There's transistors. I think. Our other three pin and those two are both the same type of device according to the barcode which doesn't tell me what they are just that they're the same Let's get out of there are these transistors or are they something special and magical there we go what are you 2n7000 that also doesn't ring a bell Okay, off the listing hunting. 
All right, uh, here we go. This whole package of stuff uh, took three months to get here, as opposed to the last one, which took you know a few weeks. Um, that's just typical. Uh, this package of f items came from Go In Electronic, who I order lots and lots of stuff from, and I'm quite pleased with them, except for the shipping time, but I don't think that's entirely their fault. Anyway, the first thing in the uh, package was in fact uh, 20 LM358 op amps uh, for 99 American pennies or a buck 30 Canadian. So those are uh, just a standard op amp, very useful to have around the shop in stock. The second thing, 10 pieces IC LM339 dip low power quad voltage comparator, high quality new, etc. Uh, go in again, 99 cents again for the package or $1. thirty Canadian. Comparators are another handy thing to just have in stock for playing. Third thing, transistory things are in fact 20 pieces 2N7000 MOSFET N channel 60 volt 0.2 amp. Just more shop stock I and mean, just standard low power MOSFETs. You never have enough of that kind of stuff. This looks painfully familiar, well not painfully familiar, awful familiar. This is another uh, one of those Realtek uh, uh, software-defined radios with another little magnetic mount antenna. Where's the first one? It's it's upstairs. I tried the first one um, when I got it on my shop laptop down here, which I'm sure you've heard over the years is ancient and uh, creaking along just on the lightest weight version of Linux I can put on it. Um, and it didn't have the processing power to deal with this, so I took it to my main computer upstairs, what I use for editing and whatnot, and it was able to tune in with just the mediocre antenna that comes with it, uh, several broadcast FM stations and various other things, and spectrum analyzer function work and worked and whatnot. So, I have another one. Hmm. And finally, in that package from GoWin, one piece USB DVB T RTL SDR Realtek FC0012 RTL820T tuner receiver. And that's the part that you're looking for if you're if you want to buy one of these. This isn't the only form factor. Um, but for compatibility you want the RTL 820T. Um, so that one was $9.60 Canadian. And uh, from GoWin. I looked at the other one of these before that I bought, and looking back through my history, I did in fact order the previous one, and it never showed up for months and months and months, so I ordered this one when I was buying some other stuff from Go In. And, uh, let's see now, where are we? This package took, you know, three months to get here. I think I said that already. But, it did finally arrive. Okay, next thing says electronic components, no commercial value. Sure. What do we have in here? A couple of things. Oh! What are you? Flying fish, it says. MQ3. That is a gas sensor. I'm not sure which type because they all look the same. The only difference is, or the only difference that you can tell what's going on is the, is the number on the side of the sensor itself, MQ3. The amplifiers and everything else are all the same. So this one on the back there's a couple, couple of LEDs, a little chip. Can I read that chip? LM393. Can't remember what that guy is off the top of my head. Um, anyway, for pins, let's just do that with a magnifying glass too. We have an analog out, a data out, a ground, and a VCC. Is that what that says in there? Yeah, VCC. So power, analog out, data out, or digital out. MQ2, MQ3. Okay, so this listing has a whole bunch of different gas sensors. A gas detection and alarm sensor module. MQ3, I bought it for $1.91 Canadian from Deep Learnings. And down here is the definitions. MQ3 is the one that I got. Size, whatever the main chip is. An LM393, yeah, working 5 volts, good. It senses 3, er, three gas sensor. Um, 
Interesting, okay. But it doesn't say what three. Uh, so it has two outputs, a TTL and an analog. The TTL is just a low high, so presumably there's a comparator or something in there. And the analog 0 to 5 gives you an indication of what's there. Ooh, eth to ethanol, steam has to be a high density and good selectivity. So it's an ethanol sensor. Ooh, I can use it for a breathalyzer. I'm guessing that's probably why I bought it. Application. Use in motor vehicles and other no drunken drivers homework personnel on site testing. Ethanol vapor detection. Okay then. Okay, and these other th <coughs> these other things that were in that same package. Bunch of little surface mount chips. Okay, I need the bigger magnifying glass for that one. WS2811. Oh that is the chip that is at the core of WS2812 LEDs, aka NeoPixels. Hang on. Yeah, uh, NeoPixels are WS2812 uh, uh, LEDs like these. You've seen me playing with these things before. Um, got, you can get them in all kinds of different form factors as just individuals or strips or rings. I've soldered a bunch of individuals together. And basically the thing that makes them cool, uh, let me zoom in on this little bunch of them here. So what makes these things cool is you only need three wires to drive a whole bunch of them. The ground and power, and then data in comes from your microcontroller, or like an Arduino or something else. And then data out of that one goes to data in of the next one. Kind of like what I've done on these ones here. You can see it better. The data just goes in and out. And the microcontroller just serial clocks them through one after another. So you can control a whole string with just really one control wire and a couple power wires. So these ICs... There's one of these built into each one of these packages. In addition, in this package, there's three LEDs. In most cases, a red, a green, and a blue. You could use anything, though. So a person could take these and use them with, for instance, 5 millimeter discrete LEDs, or an RGB LED in a single package. Possibilities. Let's see how much I paid for those things. 10 pieces, WS2811, WS2811, SOP8, World Semi, new. World Semi is the manufacturer, what WS stands for. I paid a dollar thirty for 10 of them, so 13 pennies each from Deep Learnings. Okay, while I was paused, I decided to do some playing with these things. So here's what I've got. I've got an Uno. It has just a demo uh, NeoPixel sketch. Actually, uh, it's using fast LED. So don't call it NeoPixels, call it the BS2012. Um, anyway, that's what's in there, a demo sketch. Um, wired up to this one of these chips, which I put onto one of these little uh, surface mount to dip breakout boards. I think you've seen those before. Uh, so that's on there. Um, and then I've just got a discrete red, green, and blue LED plugged in. Um, I've got power for this board coming from my power supply over here which is set to an amp um, so this is not going to be a problem but I just didn't want to draw too much current from the Arduino so all I got coming from the Arduino was two wires a ground wire and a signal wire the Arduino is being powered from uh, from my USB power bar off stage right here uh, no that's stage left um, and so, I'll power this guy on, nothing happens yet. Power the Arduino on, and it should, there we go, start running the demo sketch through those red, green, and blue LEDs. That's cool enough to be controlling with one wire, but where the cool part comes in is the chainability of these W820, or WS, uh, LEDs or LED drivers. So I'll plug 
this string of LEDs in. Nothing's still happening, but it's just plugged into power right now. Get over there. But when I plug this into the data out of the chip, then they're all being controlled through that one wire. Right now they're all doing sort of the same thing, but now they're not. They're all doing different things all through this one wire. That is so slick. So now with this little guy, I'm not limited to just using little LEDs like that. I can use bigger LEDs. I can use freaking cob LEDs with MOSFET drivers in front of them, all controlled as if they were a NeoPixel. Tell me that's not cool. So the, the other thing about this is you can control hundreds of LEDs off that single control wire. I'm excited. Can this mailbag get any better? The lie says resistances. The box just keeps giving up to me. Another multi-pack. Let's start with the obvious thing. Huh? Oh, I know what these are. Um, what's his name? Paul from Word Electronics showed me these things. Uh, or showed, well, showed the world these things, not just me particularly. I don't know the guy, but you know. You know. Um, these are desoldering needles. They are hollow stainless steel, I think. Needles of various different gauges from 0.8 up to 1. Or what do you got? 2.0. And then a little pokey one in 1.2 millimeters, I'm assuming. So what these are for, as the name would imply, is desoldering. And they are designed to kind of slip through the hole of a board, but not that board. Let's go and find one. Hang on. That'll do. So this board, I'm going to need my soldering iron on for this demonstration, I hope. Uh, so this board came out of an old piece of equipment. I don't remember what it is. Um, but what you do with these things is you slip it over the wire lead while you're heating it up with your iron. So heat that up. And slip that over the lead and just push it right down through the hole. Now what's just happened there is the whole thing's gone down through the hole. So now, since that's stainless, the solder's not going to stick to it. And there we have the lead extracted. Isn't that slick? Desoldering tool, hollow needles, I see new from... Wikita, something like that. Dollar ninety-eight. How can you go wrong? That's just even if it only uh, saves me frustration in a couple of repairs, that's going to pay for itself. I don't think there's much to see down below other than just that. Okay, what else have we got from Wikita? This looks like a bag of LEDs here, so I'll get my LED tester out. Not that it's from very far away. Um. Plug that in and see. Hmm. That's interesting. It's kind of a bluish. Where's something properly white here to shine it across? I don't know. What does that look like to you? Kind of bluish. Maybe a bit of pinky purple in there. I don't know. Let's go find out. 30 pieces F5 5mm pink round LED super bright new IC again from Wikita $1.30 for the 30 of them pink it says it looks a bit more pink in that drawing than what I saw or in that picture okay what else have we got here I think I know what these are 50 pieces yeah these are TO220 transistor uh, thermal 
transfer pads, but also electrical insulation pads. So when you're mounting a power component, a power TO220 device, do I have any kicking around here? Yes, I do. TO220 5 volt regulators. When you're mounting one of those onto a heat sink or a chassis, you can do it like that, and that acts as a thermal transfer the same way that that goop you put on your CPU or your computer does. Um, and you bolt it onto the larger heat sink. It's electrically insulated so that you don't have any short circuits if you're using the same heat sink for multiple things, especially if you use non-conductive uh, hardware or if you use little insulating turrets, but I don't have any of those handy right now. I probably have some coming, I'm guessing. Um, anyway, but that's, that's what that is. Uh, thermal transfer plus electrical insulation. Okay, I couldn't find the exact listing uh, for some reason. They may have discontinued it or whatever, but from the same seller, here's 100 pieces of the same thing. Uh, 100 insulation pads, TO220 for laptop, CPU, GPU, silicon, heatsink, shim, IC, new. 90% of that is bullshit. Uh, this part right here is your search term. Um, I bought my 50 of them for $1.30, which is 99 American cents, standard cheapest price for anything. Um, now they are selling a hundred for $1.30, so if you need some, you're going to get twice the bargain that I got. And the last thing in this package, and the last thing in this mailbag video. We have some 4-pin screw terminals, mounts on a PCB. thusly the pins are a little large but there we go just bang on there and solder them on and actually even though they are set up as four pin they really are two two pins slid together and that will come in handy because you can also use them obviously as eight pin or whatever modularity you want well, if you want even numbers, that is. And again, I couldn't find the exact listing, but this is the same seller and an almost identical item. Um, slightly different color, described differently, but whatever. Uh, so, 10 pieces terminal block connector, 3.5 millimeter pitch, 2 pin, 2 way straight pins, PCB screw. Uh, and of course, as I showed, you can just join them together into whatever you want. I paid, yeah, 99 cents, dollar 30 Canadian for the ones that I bought. They're a little bit more expensive from this guy right now, but I found other sellers that have exactly the same thing for that same 99 American or buck 30 Canadian. So if you search around with these uh, search terms up here, you will find them. Or you can follow the link to these that I will have down in the comments. And there is all the stuff from this mailbag. I'm happy with this. This is a great assortment. These circuit boards are going to come in handy. Um, not exactly sure what I'm going to do with a second one of those uh, those radios, but this one actually came with a CD that's not shattered, so I'll actually be able to see what the software that comes with them is. Not that I'm likely to use it. I'm going to stick with using the Spectrum Analyzer uh, RTL software. Um, what else have I got in here? Uh, heat sink pads, good for stock, pinky purple LEDs, LEDs are always good to have, um, screw terminals likewise, I'm sure many of these things get used with these circuit boards together, op amp comparators, the breathalyzer alcohol gas sensor thing, that should be interesting, I'm not quite drunk enough to play with it yet, um, these guys, WS2811 LED controllers. I like those. Those are slick. And I'm pretty excited about using those. I'm not sure exactly what for. Maybe just making blinking lights and sitting back and enjoying them. I don't know. Um, but as I said, I can probably use these MOSFETs right here to drive even bigger LEDs. Blah, ha, ha. <sighs> Fun times. Oh yeah, there's these uh, desoldering needles for doing repairs. That'll be handy too. Um, yeah. I like this one. This was a good one. 
Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you got any questions or comments or corrections, because I do make mistakes regularly, um, please feel free to jump down into the comments. What else? Oh yeah, thanks to my Patreon supporters. Without them, I'd actually have to buy all this stuff myself. They're kicking in. Yeah, they're not paying for all of it. There's not enough of them. Hint, hint. But those that are there are loyal and they come up with some great comments and great suggestions as well. Thank you, everybody. I will talk to you later.